How are we all doing, guys? I have a load of old TV shows that we used to do on Irish TV saved on my Sky box that I'm about to lose because I'm upgrading the Sky. So the only way I can keep them is to record them from the TV and put them straight up onto YouTube. The quality is crap. The sound is crap. The lighting is crap. I talk in the third person all the time. But I tell you what, if you just keep an eye on what I'm actually doing, they're still amazing recipes and you'll learn a lot on how to cook. So sit back, relax and enjoy because they're gonna be gone and gone forever because unfortunately the channel went, well, basically tits up. So here we are guys, couple of different recipes. Just give us a like, give us a share, give us a subscribe. Hey, I'm getting old, uh, I could do with the help. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it. Everywhere in this country, they are wild and you will be amazed at the amount of people that can actually get their hands on them, particularly throughout the countryside here in Ireland. But you will also get them in good butchers and you'll get them in good family markets, local markets, they're everywhere. I am, of course, talking about a rabbit. So check these guys out here, lads. These are wild rabbits. And how do you know when they're a wild rabbit, because there is literally next to no fat on them. Look at them. They are perfectly lean because they are running away from people like Trebo. And coming up in the brand new series, you're going to see just exactly how I get these guys. But for now, guys, you must understand, in order to eliminate fear, all you got to do is just explain something to people. So I'm going to talk you through the rabbit. I'm going to show you exactly. Just think chicken. It's no different. Think quail. Just think any animal that we normally eat and we have got right in front of us the perfect specimen of rabbit so let's have a look at him i've taken his head off because we keep that one for series four okay so here are his back legs and here are his shoulders this is where the head was and i've also gutted him out here underneath guys in the rib cage let's just have a look that is the fillet it's in the same place in every single animal tucked in underneath the rib cage you see and these, the back legs, are also known in game in particular as the haunch, like a haunch of venison. We have got our haunch of rabbit. So let me show you exactly how we butcher it. Again, once you start understanding, that's why I want you doing the chickens, because once you understand a ball and socket joint in a chicken, it's the exact same thing here in the rabbit. So let's try it. Good sharp knife. And let's pull them over there. And we've got the shoulder up here. So we just give it a little nick. Look, and it naturally comes away. Simple. There's, it's like, it's like a chicken wing. It's basically like a chicken wing. So we sharp knife, let the knife do the work. Look, it's literally pulled apart, pull it out, and voila, that is one shoulder of rabbit. Do you see what I'm saying? You're already sitting there going, oh yeah, I can work with this. Oh yeah, not too pushed about this now. We're taking away the fear. So let's do the other side. Good sharp knife. Look, it literally pulls away from it. And then you just give it a nick, pull it straight out, and sharp knife, done. We've taken the two shoulders of rabbit off. Now, let's have a look at our haunches down here. So this is exactly like the leg of the chicken. There's, look, it's like your hip, that's where we're going into. That's the ball and socket joint. So we're gonna go right in. The knife does the work. Give it a twist. Perfect. Straight through. And out she pops, like so. Again, look look how lean this is. That's why I want you eating game, guys. It's so good for you. It's so healthy. There's literally no fat in this. So we put it in. Same on the other side. Straight down. Look for the little socket. Look, if you actually follow the animal, once you understand butchering, you'll understand. Here's his backbone. And you can just about see where the leg comes right into the ball and socket joint. And that's exactly where we're going to follow. So in we go. Right through. And there is our second leg off. So we've got our two legs and we got our two shoulders off. Now, for the purpose of a rabbit stew, okay, because we're going to be braising this for about an hour to an hour and a half, probably an hour and a half, right? We need to understand. Here's the backbone. And on here is called the loin, exactly like the strip loin that you get from your beef, okay? So right down along the back here. If I was to take that off the bone and braise it just as the piece of meat, it would go really dry and actually fall apart and it wouldn't be nice at all. However, if we keep it on the bone, well then the bone protects it. 
and it comes out lovely and moist. So that's exactly what we want to do. So for this part, we're going to take out our cleaver. And if you don't have a cleaver, just use a big, one of these good strong knives, okay? So we want to keep it up on the bone. And here you'll see as well, this is known as the flank, okay? So because we're putting it into the stew, it's going to stay nice and moist. So we just little nick through there. Look at that. We could even use this knife. I don't even need to use my cleaver just in case you don't have one. And good and strong and hard and push straight down. And don't be scared. That's the theme of the show. Eliminate the fear. So straight through. Absolutely perfect. Down along the rib cage. And you can see that. Perfect. So in we go with the neck. And it's going to be lovely, succulent and moist. Now, I told you these were called a loin, but if you're ever in a restaurant, and I know a great restaurant in Killarney that serves rabbit, all you need to remember is that off the bone, it's called a loin. On the bone, it's called a saddle. Imagine a little rabbit jockey up on top of that, giving it loads. He's on the saddle. So when you see it in a restaurant, you know exactly what it is. Cleaver, if you have it, straight through. Don't be scared. And there we go. And that's how easy it is, guys, to butcher a rabbit. What are we going to put in there? Rabbit and a little bit of cider. So we're just gonna pour in about a can of cider. It doesn't really matter. All we're using here is like to braise it, kind of make a stock. So we've got a little bit of cider and just plain water. And we pour that in just enough to fill the bottom of the tray because we're gonna cover it anyway. So the steam is gonna keep going around and around and around, getting to know the rabbit and it's gonna keep it lovely and moist. Now, let's keep that out of the way because we wanna keep some as well for our stock. So basically, like a normal stock, guys, we have an onion. We're just gonna put that in, and it's more for flavor, it's for nothing else. And a whole head of garlic, skin on. Again, guys, heel of the hand, straight down. And we just crack it open, just pour it in. Again, guys, all we're making is stock, so don't get too pushed about it. Now, we're gonna wrap that in tin foil so that the steam, like I said, keeps going around, going around, keeping everything nice and moist. Preheated oven, about 160 degrees, and for about an hour, no, let's say an hour and a half, okay? So cover that up. And straight into your oven. That's gone into the oven and Trevo's going to his little magic treasure chest. And this is exactly what we have left. It's time to start getting excited again, guys. And let's just take it out. And you can see our beautiful rabbit, nice and moist. That's the leg there. You wanna keep it on the bone. People love to pick up the bone and chew on it. And that's exactly what we're doing. So that's part of the saddle and the loin that we discussed earlier on. And the rib cage and everything there, it's all flavor. Let's just keep that over here for one second while we make our sauce. Now, again, let's get a base of sauce. Good pots, guys, you know the rules by now at this stage, if you're a regular to cooking with Trevo. Butter for flavor, oil-free heat. So let's put in a dollop of butter and also a good glug of oil. And we'll get cracking onto this now. So we're gonna make our sauce. This is the simplest way to make a lovely stew. So what have we got going on? Well. We want to get in a bit of carrot there first of all, okay? So just two peeled carrots, top and tail as always. Get rid of what we don't need. And we're gonna do it a small enough dice because we want this part to cook nice and quick. Okay, nice and small. Simple, simple, simple. And again, guys, I keep saying it a thousand times, you can have all this all this done in advance when your rabbit is inside in the oven, braising away nice and gently. Beautiful. Now, Trevo's always telling you, think, think, think about what we're cooking, guys, what we're putting in, keep the flavors running, keep the ingredients, the same thing running throughout the team of your dish. So we give that a nice little stir there. Beautiful. Now, let's get our onion. And again, similar size chop to the carrot that we've just done. I just, there's nothing better, I say to you all the time, guys, if you're having a dinner party, fry off a little bit of onion in butter. The smell is just amazing. So in we go. And pop that in too. Lovely. And 
make sure our heat is on. It kind of helps. In we go, stir it around. Now, remember guys, when we put the rabbit in, didn't we braise it in cider? Okay, so let's think apples. And let's throw in a couple of whatever mushrooms you can get your hand on, field mushrooms. I've got a couple of shiitake, I've got a couple of oyster mushrooms. Just pop them all in and just a little bit of flat leaf parsley. It can't be flat leaf parsley. So pop it in. Beautiful. And a couple of cloves of garlic in there, whole, because it's going to reduce down and sweeten and soften, and it's not going to be as sharp as garlic normally. So that sounds great. Plenty of salt. And plenty of pepper. So we're going to let that just soften away, guys. And we're going to serve it with just a simple baby boiled potatoes, because you can't beat them. So let's... Swap things around here. And throw it into the back while we move on to our potatoes. Good pots, good pans, and good practice. A little bit of oil. We've got a good non-stick pan there, lads. Sorry, a little bit of butter. You knew what I was talking about. A little bit of oil. So I've just got a plain baby boiled potato. It's already been cooked. Cut them in half. And we're going to crispen that up nicely. Listen, listen, listen. Pan saying, Trevo, we're almost ready for whatever you're going to do next. Give it a little stir. Oh, yes. And now we're going to add in the liquor that we braised the rabbit from. So we've got the cider. We've got the natural juices and everything. And we're going to pour that in now. Just enough to start making our sauce. Let's have a little look at that, guys. And that's just going to reduce down, okay? Oh, the smells. The smells are amazing. Absolutely perfect. Throw in another few potatoes there. Nearly forgot. Throw in your tomato puree as well. This will help thicken that sauce as well. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And it's about a tablespoon. Drop it in. Beautiful. Stir that around. Look at that, guys. Absolutely. Oh, man, the smell is just incredible. Full heat, because now the sauce is simmering away nicely, and the carrots are beginning to cook away. Get a few more potatoes in the pan. Now, all we're doing, guys, they're already cooked, like I said. We're just bringing them back up to temperature. So they can just sit away nicely there on their own for two or three minutes while we reduce our sauce. Plenty of cream in now into our sauce. Okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Cream and cider. Who doesn't like that? Beautiful. The last thing we want to do is we want to dice up our spring onions. And don't forget, that rabbit has just come out of the oven, so it's still nice and warm. We're letting the sauce reduce for a second. Dice your spring onions there on the side like that. Now we're going to pop in our rabbit, our leg, the saddle. Oh, beautiful. There's one of those lovely little shoulders. Put them all in. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Absolutely fantastic. And you want that sauce. Look, that's the rib cage up near the top and the neck. Throw it all in. People want to be picking at that. It's like the old chicken wings. Put it in. It's gorgeous. It's full of flavor. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Pop our lid back on, bring that up to temperature. Pop in your spring onions, because they're nearly ready. Let's turn over these bad boy potatoes. Look at that, nice and crispy. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is so good. Absolutely perfect. Give them a minute or two on that side. Last but not least, I said our apples, guys, to go in with the rabbits. They only need a minute or two to soften down. Don't worry about it. Throw in the core. Throw in everything. It's a wild rabbit, so we're going to eat rustic wild food. Throw that in. Beautiful. We've got two minutes for that to simmer, and we've got two minutes for this to come back up to temperature. I need that on its own. 
So let's get ready, clean up and serve. Oh my God, guys, smell the apples, smell the cider and smell the rabbit. We have created an absolute masterpiece. Heat off, bring the pot over here. And a true Trevo style, guys. Oh, wow, look at the steam. The smell just going through the kitchen is just incredible. And this is exactly what you're going to get at home because we've eliminated the fear throughout the entire episode. Let's look at that, guys. Oh, the sauce is thickened. It's coated the rabbit perfectly. Our veg is cooked. And let's, because this is such a healthy dish, let's just finish it off. Final knob of butter. That's going to melt in. It's going to enrich the sauce even that bit more. It's going to thicken it up while we serve our beautiful spuds. Oh, if I was here now, this is what I'd be doing, right? Trayvon would be out in the woods. I'd have got that rabbit myself, and I'd be sitting down, feet up on a log, and I'd be picking away at the ribs, on the bones, like the chicken wings and everything, because that's how good it is. Now, let's serve up our beautiful spuds. And that's a great dish, guys, wasn't it? Wasn't that so easy and so quick as to how we do it? Remember, cook extra all the time. It takes minutes to heat them up the following day. So let's get them out here. A few spuds like this. Oh, yes. The smell, the onions, the butter. Oh, come on. You just know this is going to be amazing. Let's get a, try and get a piece of everything, okay, for the garnish. So let's get... Excuse my fingers, guys, but we're cooking at home here. We'll get out a shoulder, another shoulder. Look how moist and sucking it. Oh, yes. There's a beautiful haunch, or back leg, as we called it. Let's take out another little piece of that, guys. Don't worry, we'll get a good picture of this. And you have to give a little bit of the saddle that is now just melting and falling off the bone. And falling off my fork! Let's put it up there. And that's why we put in all the effort, guys. This is why a couple of minutes work beforehand means you get an incredible dish like this. And you can do this. Trust me, it is this easy. The fear is gone. The hassle's gone. Because Trevo has gotten rid of all of it. Well, let's finish this off with a little bit, guys, of our sauce. Oh, my God. Look at this. We've even got a lovely piece of apple there. I couldn't have placed it any better. A little bit more sauce. Now, please try it. Give us a shout on Facebook. Give us a shout on Twitter. Cooking with Trevo eliminates the fear and shows you guys how to cook amazing food. Please try it at home. <laughs>